Hello, my name is Carlos Conceição. I'm the director of the film Serpentarius, which is uh, a Portuguese Angolan film showing at uh, Forum uh, in uh, the 69th Berlin Alley. And I'm very proud to be here, having a great time. I hope some of you will still be able to actually catch up the film and uh, come talk to me. I will be delighted to take you along in the same uh, journey that I did for the film itself. Thank you. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. My name is John Borbobak, and we're going to discuss the film Serpentarius with director Carlos Conceição. Hi, welcome Hello, thank to you. the festival. Thank you for welcome having to me. the Teddy Award. Um, the film uh, invites the audience as well to be the main character on the journey. Um, and this journey is, um, is made together from very different um, scenes, very different time periods. It seems to uh, transcend certain time limits and, and time uh, and the notion of time. Uh, was this something that you particularly wanted to work with on this film? Well, I thought that the film was for me a kind of an investigation of uh, why I felt so somehow uh, devoid of a homeland, mm -hmm. in, both in Portugal yeah. or in Africa. And um, what I thought was, were the reasons of my cultural uh, identification with yeah. either one of these two countries was something that, in my opinion, started in the 15th century and, um, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, with the, the occupation by the Portuguese of yeah. certain African countries and afterwards had a lot to do with the urbanization of Angolan cities with um, Portuguese colonialists that actually yeah. were sort of cowboys and all that. Yeah, right. So the idea of uh, looking into different uh, time periods, yeah. historically speaking, was uh, a, sign, a sort of a prologue to that investigation. And of course the future point of view is more like um, I would say a hypothetical observation mm. of the past, of, of, of the present. It places the present on the same level as the past. Yeah, so, so. yeah. So you say that it was um, the starting point, at least, was a personal investigation of of this sort of void that you that you felt. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Well, I, I was born in Angola in, in Africa. My family uh, has been an Angolan family since the. Mm -hmm. 1910s yeah. and at a certain moment I went to live in Portugal in my teenage years and that those formative years which are very important the, okay. the teenage years I lived them in, in, in Europe and that kind of led to a sort of a, a very hard difficulty in, um, in feeling at home in yeah. Africa but then again I wasn't really at home in, in Europe as well so I it started see. there. Yeah. yeah. Um, the title Serpentarius, you provide a definition within within the movie, actually, like. Yes. Serpentarius is a constellation. Yeah. And it kind of gives its name to the 13th sign of the zodiac. Yeah. Which is um, something I'm not particularly interested in. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, the esoteric side. Yeah. It's not really my thing, but I'm fascinated by something that exists and yet it doesn't. And this is the 13th 
zodiac mm. sign where you have 12 to match 12 months of the year and then there's this sign this uh, couple of weeks in December that nobody really knows anything about and it's uh, almost like a feeling of belonging to a certain place it's a sort of a, mm. a, a feeling that should be there and it's not or yeah. is there but, it, but it's not it, it exists and doesn't at yeah. the same time so the movie also goes deep into feelings about home, roots, um, and uh, and longing, and kind of this disappearance of longing. There is there is actually um, a line, a line yeah. about this in in the movie. Um, can you tell us a bit about about this? What what is yeah. it with longing? Longing is directly related to nostalgia, yeah. And nostalgia has to do with memory. So history and memory are always very yeah. I mean, twin brothers. Right? Yeah. And of course, that uh, to me, most of the memories that I uh, you know the concept of post memory. Right? It's a sort of a memory that you inherit mm -hmm. yeah, it's not right. your particular yeah. memory it's something that you and it's interesting that my grandmother in particular had this memory of life in Africa from a moment that was not at all um, my circumstance yeah and there was no documentation of that there is a few historical um, material yeah. about certain times certain time periods but to me all her narratives were you know kind of channeled by this cinematic appearance mm -hmm. you know it had yeah. to do with the with the costumes and uh, different color temperatures and different textures and different uh, ratios yeah those were movies basically yeah so you play with this in the movie as well we see all of this like these different yeah, ratios, it's, these it's different the, formats yeah, it's the main, frames yeah, and that was the main idea behind that. Yes, That's definitely. It was mm. one of the, the most, yeah. uh, the earliest uh, mechanics of the film. Yeah. Then you also play with different genres in the film. There, there is like elements of sci-fi in it, but also um, Western appears. Then there, are, there is this more like historical costume period piece sort of uh, atmosphere in it. Um, why was it important to you to put all these different well, genres together? Exactly because of the of those memories, those acquired memories that I was mm. telling you yeah. about. It's almost as if all these memories were snippets of films yeah. of different genres, of different uh, materials and different textures. Yeah. And this is why, uh, given that the film is not a documentary but has a sort of a document. Terry yeah. um, device by looking at in, into the past to create yeah. this uh, uh, yeah. fable. Yeah, I right. thought I thought it was um, like the, the balancing between fiction and fact was, yeah. you know, inviting to that um, mm -hmm. sort of game. Absolutely. Um, the hero in this, or the character that we follow in this in this film, is a. Uh, He's in complete solitude throughout. Um, does this reflective of this inner journey that you kind of projected into in, I think into this? Film? The feeling of not of, of not belonging or mm -hmm. the the search of uh, trying to figure a way yeah. of belonging is probably a very it has to be a very lonely process. Yeah. And my my metaphor for the post catastrophe post disaster yeah. disaster. Um, landscape basically is this uh, kind of reset mm. of the universe of the world of, of everything that was created yeah. and uh, like going back to zero to you know kind of start to probe uh, until something calls in the yeah. blood or something yeah let's talk about this sequence in the film then um which you compiled from different uh, archival materials um, there were, again, a plethora of, of uh, different materials in it, from real-life documentations to 
commercials, uh, commercials and, uh, yeah. these, these the news reels. Yeah, uh, those are all uh, uh, public domain material which doesn't mm -hmm. really exist in very good condition. So right. they all have this very very different um, appearances and very different resolutions. Yeah. And I thought it was also interesting to to play with that. Um, yeah, with how time perpetuates, you know, in the, the media itself, yeah. the way it's stored and preserved mm -hmm. uh, has a way of telling uh, the story of what, what, are in, what, what is in the images. So right. it's interesting that some of those shots came from VHS and, so, and others are Super 8 and some, yeah. some of them were shot by myself. Others are trans transformations, compositions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my idea of the content of those um, images yeah. is basically to it's the moment in which there's an interception between the idea of, um, of the war, mm -hmm. which was one of the factual, um, historical, historically speaking, the most important element to define Angola yeah. in its post-independence life as a country. The Angola that I know, of course, yeah. and the one that I'm interested in, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm interested in the concept of colonization, of course, but it's not something I relate to, even though yeah. I'm a descendant from yeah. Portuguese families that went there in yeah. the 19th century. Right. Uh, but I think that those images provide an interception of that um, apotheosis for the colonialism and the metaphor that I, of, of, of which the doors are open in the second yeah. half of the film, which is something that everybody can relate to more easily uh, than a yeah. uh, civil war that actually belongs to a certain country, a certain time period, a certain moment, mm. and probably will be interesting to someone researching the life and the history of that particular country, mm. not necessarily for everyone. So the idea of a post-disaster world yeah. and of making a science, a deliberate science, science fiction film, to me was much more important than, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. um, than actually sticking yeah. to facts. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the film seems to be, at the same time, autobiographical, but also somewhat ethnographic, if, if, if that makes any sense. It seems like that still there is um, quite an interest to investigate this whole historical trajectory in it, mm -hmm. which I think gives a sort of a different tone, like a different texture to it besides no. the autobiographical. Yeah, I wouldn't call it like from, from, from the past, from the mm -hmm. further, yeah. from the, 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 the older, uh, yeah. chronologically speaking, yeah. the older um, incidents. I wouldn't call it an investigation. I would, mm -hmm. It's just a kind of a caricature, you know? Okay. I think, I think you know, all that, the process of colonization is a very pathetic one, an unfortunate one, I think. Mm. And what I thought I was uh, probably able to do in that um, sort of prologue was to explore both sides of the coin. Yeah. And, um, you know, just set the, the, the very basic facts of what was before the yeah. slave trade started and stuff like that, which is yeah. what I learned in, in at school, at history mm. school, you know, especially this conversation between the, the people in the tribe, which are actually wearing a mix of contemporary clothes and traditional clothes. So I thought it was interesting to yeah. have that kind of anachronism there. What they're talking about, about this uh, uh, white-winged bird that emerged from the mm -hmm. bottom of yeah. the sea, referring to the caravels with white uh, yeah. wings, right? White. Um, how do you call it? I mean, from the boats, like the, 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 the material, um, wings, it, right? Yeah, okay. I think so. Um, this is actually a factual, um, an interesting historical fact that has been written and documented that the idea uh, of the Earth being round was not uh, generalized mm. because the main activity of these uh, communities were fishing very close to the shore, so they never went further into, the, 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 yeah. didn't have the, the technology to go into the sea and realize that the horizon was not the end of the world. So if you see a boat coming from uh, from the bottom of the sea yeah. like this, right? 
yeah. appearing from the curve. It, yeah. it looks like it's coming from the bottom. And this bottom. is yeah, one, yeah, of, yeah. one of the basic elements of colonization, which is basically that these white people had magical powers and were related to gods, mm. as many gods in the African folklore are actually yeah. depicted with white skin, but were already depicted as white, white skin entities mm. before any white people yeah. got there. Yeah. So when the first um, colonialists appeared, they were like suddenly see, seen as very special yeah. um, non-earthly entities. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, then the, the opportunistic um, um, colonialists were, you know, it was just taking mm. from that moment on. So everything was set there, you know, all the, the basic. Yeah. Um, I felt like that. Necessary like elements. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I felt like that uh, in a very subtle way, and maybe this is something that it's just me reading into it, um, but through this long sequences of silence and waiting and following uh, this, this man in, in, in all these beautiful landscapes, in his solitude. Um, at certain points in the film, there, there seemed to arise some sort of erotic tension within it. There was like some sort of, through the gaze of the camera, there was some kind of, a, I don't know, um, desire popping up, but this is... You mean towards the character? Yeah, and through the character, from the character, sort of. And, and you know, it can be a lot of things. Uh, because we also talk about longing and belonging and kind of this idea of trying to find ways to belong or... The thing, yeah, there's of course this very important relationship to the, the earth. Yeah. to the, the action of walking, of actually being, um, yeah. you know, doing a long a stretch of, yeah. of walk, which in Africa has a completely different meaning mm. than it does in Europe, because everything is really, really far. Right. And uh, if I want to go to the beach for a swim, I know that I will drive for two hours, and it, that's okay. It doesn't really yeah. keep me from going. And, yeah. Uh, you know. um, and the feeling that those final um, moments in the film, I would say the, the final half hour, is supposed to give the audience is actually a feeling of um, a fatigue, of mm -hmm. uh, desolation, you know, because it's a very harsh yeah. landscape and because this character has to cross it by yeah. foot and we need to take the same time with him so that yeah. the feeling is properly passed on to the audience. Yeah. The erotic side, I mean, it's like every single interpretation once the film is shown is yeah. absolutely welcome. <laughs> uh, because yeah. the film is not, it doesn't belong to me anymore. Of course, it starts to belong to mm. whoever watches it. Yeah. And of course, the, to me, good cinema is um, something that leaves the audience uh, the chance to be a co-author somehow. Mm. somehow. Yeah. Well, in any case, the film definitely provides a very fresh perspective and a very different perspective, I would say, um, that, we, that, that, we've, that we've seen before. So thank you for that and thank you for thank this you so very nice yeah. talk as well. And all the best for the rest of the Berlinale. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very nice talking to you. Thank, thank you so much. You.